Hey guys, Crewman here with a video that I've wanted to do for a while and this felt like the perfect time to do it with BTC going up and miners starting to turn back on. First things first, this video is for entertainment purposes only. As I shift through the, the Hive OS data and give my opinion on it, any coin I tell you that I would or wouldn't mine with is, finan is not financial advice. Trust me, I'm not an expert on this subject. And any GPU I tell you is good or bad, it is my opinion, and I try to use some data to back it up, but at the end of the day, it is only my opinion. So I'm mostly going to be focusing on GPUs, as I am a GPU miner first and foremost, and I feel like we can safely assume a majority of miners on Hive OS are GPU miners as well. And while this data will not be perfect, I think it'll be a pretty good snapshot of GPU miners. Alright, so let's take a look at AMD GPUs first. Now this is wild. All right, this took me about 10 minutes to fully comprehend and wrap my head around. If you do the math, you know, you, you go to other and you do the math of all of the AMD GPUs on this list, and there are a lot of them, 43% of AMD GPUs currently mining are Polaris, as in anything from like a 470 to a 580, 4 gig or 8 gig models. That is wild to me. I did a few month I did a video a few months ago on on whether or not an RX 580 is profitable on Dynex, which is the most profitable coin that a Polaris can mine, and the answer was no when the hash rate was about half of what it is right now. So this is utterly wild to me. Now if you look at hash rate dot no, right? and we take a look at an, at an RX 470, you need to have seven cents, let me show you this. You need to have seven cents power cost to basically break even on an RX 480 right now. I don't know what people are mining on these things. If I was guessing, maybe we have huge farms that have made their money back on these things years and years ago, like you know, four, three, four years ago, and are mining either ETC or Dynex. Uh, I actually know someone overseas who has like three or four cents power and picked up a ton of these things for like 20 bucks and is basically just tossing them on whatever's profitable because at three or four cents everything's profitable and just basically mining with these things until they're utterly dead. And considering these things are, you know, five years old or older right now, I can't really see them dying anytime soon, you know. What's already dead, it's kind of hard to kill it as I say in Game of Thrones. That said, if you are not someone who has a really high power rate, uh, I'm sorry, really low power rate of six cents or less, even if you paid like 20 bucks on these things, please do not mine on them. Send them to people that are looking for the first gaming GPU. These are not mining cards anymore. Their time has passed. Let them sleep. They don't deserve to be mining anymore. You should not be mining on Polaris GPUs anymore. So the rest of the AMD uh, GPUs break down as follows. We've got 12% on RDNA 1. These are like, you know, 5600 XTs, 5700s, 5700 XTs. These things are borderline profitable at 9 or 10 cents. I'm not sure I'd be mining on them these days, uh, especially since they're holding value at like between 130 to 150 for the 5700 XTs. I would be selling those and looking to get 6600s or 6600 XTs as they are much more efficient around that price. Then we've got about 30% on RDNA 2 or 6000 series. And that makes a lot of sense as the majority of these things are profitable up until like 12 cents uh, mining Dynex, especially as the GPU op optimizations on one zero miner and uh, SRB, especially SRB for AMD GPUs, uh, they just keep coming and the efficiency and the amount of kilohash they get is pretty good. I have a few of the mining Dynex myself. So Polaris RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 comprise of about 85% of the total GPUs mining, uh, AMD GPUs mining on Hive OS. Now if we look down the list, you'll notice a few interesting uh, GPUs amongst all the rest. You can see the Radeon 7s have almost a 1% uh, mark share of the mining, which is pretty impressive uh, considering how many of these things die. I've always wanted one, I, one that works anyway. I have a dead one in my shed, but I've never been able to find one that works uh, that didn't cost an arm or leg, as in I still feel like these things are overpriced at the between $300 to $350 they're going for right now, considering they can really only mine Dynex, they can die pretty easily. Uh, another interesting one over here is we see the Radeon Pro V520, which is the BC160. 
and that's got almost 1% market share as well. Uh, I really do feel for anybody who bought these things at the height of the bull run, as these things cost about $1,200 per GPU, and now they're worth you know between one to 200. I personally paid about $75 per GPU, and I have eight of them, and they're doing pretty good for me now, but I can't imagine how I'd feel if I paid 1200 for these things. Just goes to show you, do not FOMO into crypto mining purchases, whether it be GPUs or ASICs. Moving on to the NVIDIA models, there's a lot less surprises than AMD has. You know, as we can see, the majority of the market share, 21%, is taken up by 3070s and 3060Ti's. And if you add in the LHR and the LHR, then the LHR models, you got about a 27% market share which isn't surprising as these are the two of the best GPUs you can mine with right now. They're good on the most coins. The most miners are developing mining software for them. So, you know, again, not surprising. The majority of my farm, I want to say about 90% of it is made up of 3070s and 3060 Ti's. Probably about 95% actually now that I think about it. There's only really two real shockers here in the top, let's say top 12 GPUs. You've got the P106, 106 gigs at 4%. I'm surprised people are mining with these things still as they're basically 10 series. Uh, again, I don't know, maybe people got them for 10, 15, 20 bucks and are just sticking them on something because they have a really low power rate, similar to the Polaris. But these things are less efficient than the Polaris, which and they can't even play games on them, unlike the Polaris cards. So it's kind of a little more surprising. Uh, another one is the... 1660 Super at 8%. You know, I get people like these things. I get they can be efficient and they break even at 10 cents. So if you have like a pretty good residential rate or you just believe in the coin and you can write them off, I get that some people are mining on them right now. You know, I, I personally wouldn't. I think their time has passed. Even with these numbers, you know, it's not something I would mine on. I would be, you know, I would be selling them considering that they're somehow still over $100 on eBay and I would be selling them and acquiring 3060 Ti's and maybe even 3060's right now because it's very easy to get them and you know I think the market is probably at the lowest point it is going to be at. Those are the big surprises for me. Uh, some other things to take note though, the 3080 6 gig or the 3080 10 gig is 6%. Uh, you know I just wonder if that's a lot of people that were like me and just were hesitant to sell them or they're actually being they're actually profitable uh, me personally i'm not having much success with my 3080 10 gigs which is why i started selling them i just assembled the rig and uh, you know i'm selling them to fund other purchases and just to hold on to the money to maybe reinvest somewhere down the line uh one thing i did want to look at is i was trying to find the 40 series where they were at not a lot of people are buying these things for mining if you look the 4090 even though these things are the best GPUs mining and they've been proven that way and are the most profitable. You notice that, you know, they're not even making up a third of a percent. And I honestly just feel like a lot of people are very hesitant to spend $1,500 or actually 1600 and more as they are actually going up worldwide that are only making a few cents a day, especially considering that, you know, we've got the rumored Blackwell series releasing in the you know, in mid 2025, which is when a lot of people suspect that we will be leaving the bull market. Um, you know, I think these are good purchases. I think if you are very debt, if you know, if you have money from selling your GPUs from before and you want to reinvest into crypto, I think 4090s are the way to do it, especially if your power is a concern or your density is a concern. I think these are a very good way to go, along with the 4070 Ti, which is not even, which is 0.18 of a percent. And further down below, the 4070, 0.8 of a percent. So basically, guys, what this means is people are not buying these things for mining. You know, people are gun shy to buy them for mining, and I don't blame them. You know, I think they're they're overcosted as miners. You know, I have a rig of them, uh, but you know, I was able to get them for good prices, and you know, I sold GPUs to pay for them. So if you're gonna do that, that might not be the worst thing in the world to do. But otherwise, you know, it seems like a lot of people are just kind of laying off the 40 series right now. But it is nice to see that the majority of this list is 30 series GPUs 
because you know I think gamers understand that, or I think miners understand that they are the best ones to be mining with in this current environment. All right, so let's move on to what everybody's mining, basically what coins people are mining. You know, we see Dynex is number one at 22%. It's gone down a little bit from 25%, which means other coins are doing better and people are realizing they don't need to mine Dynex to be profitable or realizing that Dynex is not nearly as profitable as everybody had initially thought due to the fact that we are currently at basically the all-time high and the price is not, not trending upwards. If anything, it's kind of stagnant on a downward trend as it's about 87 cents right now, down from, you know, it was about a dollar five in the last week or so. But I mean, it's still up 33% in the last three months and, you know, it's skyrocketed over the last year. But, you know, it's for, as far as what is currently good to mine, I think people are understanding that there are better alternatives. Next, we see ETC at number two, unsurprising, but I'm assuming there's a mix of ASICs on that. Probably, if you were asking me, some kind of mix of ASICs and Polaris GPUs that people just are still mining. You know, a lot of people believe in ETC. Um, I'm not mining it personally, but, you know, that doesn't mean people are wrong to be doing it. So, second, next we've got, next we've got Ravencoin, which is unsurprising. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people were mining Ravencoin in the last bull run, but I really don't expect to see this number go up too, too much as... A lot of people are kind of gun shy to mine Kapow GPUs due to how much power they consume. And in the current market, power is everything. And with power cost on the rise, it seems like it is a worthwhile coin to mine. One that's nice to see is Nexa basically at, at number four, you know, at number four with 5%. Um, you know, Nexa hash is down quite a bit. Uh, last video I saw, I checked on it, it was down to about. You know, it's down to about February numbers. We're at about 8.5 terahash, which is pretty good. You know, obviously, Nexus price hasn't really been doing much. We're also at February's prices. But if you believe in the future of Nexa, and it seems like quite a lot of people do, as, you know, 5% of all GPUs on Hive are mining it for the number fourth spot, uh, you know, I think it's I think it's not a bad coin to mine. You know, I don't think I, I think I'd be mining it if I didn't have such a huge bag of it. And if I didn't really want to triple mine right now instead of just dual mine. Then we move on to BTC. You know, BTC is 4%, but I'm just assuming it's all ASICs. It hasn't been GPU mineable for a while. Uh, next we see, uh, we have Radiant, RxD, Zeph, which I don't really know much about, and Ergo. And then and the next rank up with 4%, 4%, and 3%. Uh, you know, that makes sense as... You can dual mine Radiant and Ergo, and it makes sense, especially for a lot of the NVIDIA GPUs out there. Uh, it is currently the most profitable thing. And, you know, if you look at their hash, if you look at something like Radiant's hash rate, it is, uh, it's actually pretty low right now. I mean, it's going up a little bit. You know, it went up from 71 terahash to about 95 terahash, but we're still at about May, you know, May 2023 levels. So it makes sense that there are a lot of people mining it. You know, my, my entire farm basically right now is on Ergo and Radiant. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go on quite a big tangent. Zill is only at 3%. Why is Zill not the top? I don't understand why there are not, you know, Zill's not at 80 to 90% uh, in terms of mining. Every GPU miner should be mining Zill. There is no reason for you guys not to be doing it. You know, it's just, it's free money. I guess I have to make another, yet another video explaining how Zill is just free money, guys. In, you know, currently GPU mining is still in a tough spot. We are still in the middle of a bear market. You guys really, really, really need to be mining Zill. I don't know why you're not. Uh, you know, there's there's no excuse. You just, you just need to be doing it. I could spend another hour going over all the reasons why, but you need to be doing it. Uh, also, K1 Pool has dropped uh, a lot of their fees, so you don't even have to mine a secondary coin on it coming with the coming up Zill network upgrade. So you can just... Get on K1 pool with Zill, and you should just be mining it. There's no reason to not do it, whether you use my code or not. But as always, if you use my code, I very much appreciate it. All proceeds go back into the channel. So moving on, you know, we've got XMR at 3%. That's a CPU mineable coin, privacy coin. I'm sure there's just people mining it because they can. You know, Alethium is an up-and-coming coin that, you know, it's a great coin to mine. It's got a lot of cool infrastructure. Uh, ideas and things that I like on it. However, we are currently at its all-time high right now, so it's kind of hard for me to recommend mining it when you can mine other things that don't have quite as much hash rate. Now, you know, none of this is financial advice, and I could utterly be wrong. 
and maybe it's time to go on ALF. I, I don't know. I'm currently not mining it, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't. Next, you know, we've got Caspa at 2%. I'm just assuming this is all ASICs because I hope none of you are GP mining Caspa right now. There is no reason not to do it. And, you know, finally, at the rounding out the coins, we've got our Raptorium, which is 2%. You know, I think it's a good CPU mineable coin. A lot of people who want a CPU mine and don't really feel like doing anything just throw their CPUs on Raptorium. You know, when I my CPUs are on, they're mining Raptorium, and I'm actually probably going to turn it on and grab some more coming up here soon. Let's just keep going down the down the line. You can see we've got XNA, which is a coin that's up and coming. It is a Kapow algorithm coin, but you know it, it looks like it could be the next one of the next big things. So people are mining it. It's good to see Conflux almost at two percent. I think Conflux is one of the best things you could mine right now, especially since I found out you can move it all. You can convert it to other coins on Changely, which is nice. So I would definitely recommend mining Conflux if you don't mind. I think it's a great coin. And you can also dual mine it with, or triple mine it, for now anyway, with Ironfish, which is about not even 1% of the network share. Iron's taken quite the dump from all the hype in the beginning, but, you know, I think it still has play. Uh, you know, Iron has been making a little bit of a rally lately, and I just think there's too much investor money on it to let it fail. And then we've got, we've got Chlor over here that people do mine. You know, we've got some Ethereum offshoots, Ethereum and ETH proof of work sitting at under, you know, half a percent. You know, if you believe in either of those, I would go ahead and mine them. You know, I don't really like much about them. You know, I have a little bit of an Ethereum bag. It looks like it was a mistake, but we'll see. And then, you know, if you go further down, you can see Kiro, which I've heard a lot of people like to mine. You can see Zeph up there, and then uh, you know now we're now we're really 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 into you know altcoin territory, and you know none of this is even cracking a percent of a percent. My biggest takeaway from this is we're starting to see Dynex go down a little bit, which is nice. And my surprise that none of you are mining Zill. What is going on? You guys all need to mine Zill. S keep mining Zill. And stop, you know, just, just keep mining Zill and stop using Polaris GPUs. <laughs> Those are my biggest takeaways from just doing some quick analysis of this chart. I really appreciate you guys watching this video with me and going on this journey with me. Uh, you know, it's very interesting. I'm going to probably do another follow-up to this video in about a month, maybe two months. I might be doing this monthly. You know, it's kind of like, it's neat like the Steam survey. It's kind of nice just to see what people are doing. And it kind of gives you an idea of if you are either trending in the right direction or maybe you need to just change up what you're doing because the masses are. Now, whether you believe in any of that or not is up to you, but you can never have too much data. So thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Croup man.